So this is how we use two identities, one for pull request and one for the main branch, each targeting different environments in the same workflow. Hey friends, Anto here. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to see how we can use multiple Google identities in the same workflow. What I want to do is create two buckets, a dev bucket and a production bucket, and only allow access to an identity on the dev bucket when we are on a pull request and allow access to the production bucket when we are on the main branch. So in previous video, I have already covered the workload identity federation and how it works, but was mainly from an API calls point of view. So I showed in the, in the other video how the mechanism works with the GitHub API and the exchange of tokens with the Google API. In uh, today's video, instead of doing that manually, we're going to use a GitHub action, which is the Google GitHub action host. And we're going to see how to use that with the different service account using the same workload identity federation pool. So as usual, before I forget, everything can be found down in the description. So there are links to the uh, actual uh, configuration in uh, Google Cloud and the link to the workflow file as well. So let's jump straight into the workflow file to see what we want to do. And then I'm going to show you how we do that on the Google side as well. So this workflow file, as you can see, has a, a trigger on uh, two different events. One is when uh, there is a push on the main branch and one there is when there is a pull request against the main branch. We are also only considering this workflow when there is a change on this specific file. So now, if we look at the jobs, we have a number of steps. Um, so this is the standard checkout step. Uh, one thing to notice is the line 16 where we have the ID token right. This is needed to get the ID token in our environment variables so the actual GitHub action auth can uh, work. So as you can see, we have two steps that are invoking the same action. So one is for uh, the dev identity and one is for the production identity. The other thing to notice is this if condition here. So we want to execute the dev identity only when we are not on main and the production identity when we are on main. Before you think that this is the only check we are doing, wait because this is also enforced on the Google side and I will show you in a second. So here we have the reference to the workload identity provider that we have configured to validate the assertions coming from the ID token. And then we specify the service account that we want to impersonate. So bucket dev has only access to the dev bucket and the bucket PRD is only has only access to the PRD bucket. So now if we skip to the next step, what we can see is that we have the setup of the Google Cloud and then we have two simple commands that are the gcloud storage ls against the dev storage and the gcloud storage ls against the production storage. So now, as you can see, I've commented out these two lines, the conditions, simply because I want to show you what happens when we try to execute with the identity that doesn't have permissions. And because it's gonna error out, we have the continue on error. So now let's have a look at how this works from a GitHub point of view. So if I go and do the change to the file, And then I commit this against a new branch. So now I can create a pull request. By creating the pull request, I'm generating an event that should trigger the action. As you can see, the action is been triggered. So now in this action, we should see the authentication happening only for the dev service account. So we have bucket dev being authenticated. So after the configuration of the Cloud SDK, we run the command gcloud storage against the dev bucket and we can list all the files. And then we do the same for the production bucket, but as you can see, we don't have access. So this one returns an error and fails. So now let's try to merge these pull requests. And this should trigger another action that is, that is authenticating as the production service account, so the bucket PRD. Now configuring the Cloud SDK, and then we should expect a failure for the dev bucket and a success for the PRD bucket. So as you can see, the dev bucket failed, the PRD returned the data. So, so this is how we use two identities, one for pull request and one for the main branch, each targeting different environments in the same workflow. So now let's have a look at how we can do the configuration on the Google side. So all the files, as I said, are linked down in the description. So 
you have a link to the workflow file and to the Google configuration. So for all the steps, this is what I've done. So I've created the two buckets. So these are just regular commands to create buckets. Then I configured the workload identity pool. So there is a pool and then I configured the provider. So what we need to pay attention here is the attribute mapping. So we have Google subject mapped to the assertion subject. That is the value coming from the identity token. And then we have attribute workflow ref, which is mapped to the assertion job workflow ref. And we also have the attribute event name mapped to the assertion event name. So after this, we create two service account, the bucket dev and the bucket PRD. We authorize the service account to operate as object viewers, respectively on uh, each bucket. So the dev bucket gives access to the um, dev service account and the PRD bucket gives access to the PRD service account. And then in the end, we have the add IAM policy binding to allow the impersonation of this service account from uh, GitHub workflow. To do that, this is the important bit. We have to configure the principal set as a member in this IAM binding policy. And we are specifying that any identity coming from this workload identity pool and this specific provider, when the attribute event name is pull request, is authorized to impersonate the service account. So now this is for demo purposes. So this one is not specifying which repository. So any repository opening a pull request is going to come up with an ID token with this event name. So make sure you add more validation or you use the CL expression language for additional conditions. And then the last one is the one that authorizes the impersonation of the production service account. So this one is not based on the event type, but is based on the workflow ref. And this one has all the parameters that we want because it's referencing the GitHub pool. And then the attribute validation is done on the workflow ref. And this one is very detailed because in the workflow ref, we have the organization name on GitHub, the name of the repo, and also the full path of the workflow file, including the reference on the branch. So this can only be executed when we are on main. So again, these are the two differences between the two service account, and that's where we enforce the if condition. So this is going to be available only when we are on a pull request. Instead, this other one is going to be available when we are on that specific branch or for that specific workflow and for that specific repo. So this is very useful, especially if you consider something like infrastructure as code and you want to automate your infrastructure changes. I made another video here where you can see how to do exactly the same thing, but using Terraform. And in that video, I'm going to show you how to use different identities, one for planning, one for applying, and only allow the planning on the pull request and allow the apply when you merge. Hope you like this video. Let me know down in the comments if you have questions and see you in the next one.